We are Luca and Sara. For the past three years, we have been living and traveling in our old truck camper, driving from Alaska to Argentina. When the pandemic kicked off, the lives of many travelers, van lifers, overlanders changed. Good morning, beautiful people, and welcome back to Liu, Live Everything in Wonder. This video is not only about us, but it's about uh, fellow travelers all around the world. We asked some of our friends to share their experiences. Everyone is living a different situation, but we have one thing in common. We are, or we were, all living in a vehicle. Someone has been able to drive or fly back home. Someone is stuck in a foreign country. Someone is stuck in their own country. What do you think? Will be this the end of a strong movement? The end of my life? Leave everything and wander. Oh man, I've always loved that name. What's up guys? Um, Phil here from Down to Mob Overland. And this is my home on wheels eh, for right now. The A-Liner A-Frame camper trailer. Uh, so the whole coronavirus stuff, uh, yeah, it's affected the world quite a bit. Um, it's affected my world um, in the location I'm at quite a bit. But other than that, things have been pretty great. Um, been spending time with family. So I bought a Jeep Gladiator uh, a couple months ago, and I've been planning to build that out, put a flatbed and truck camper on it. Um, and this has been my temporary home. Well, with all this going on, I was up in Oregon, we were building the truck, and I decided to come back to Arizona. I have a home base here, and most of my family and friends are here. Uh, so I figured if, you know, any state kind of lockdowns went in place or anything like that, I wanted to be in Arizona. So, um, happy to be here. The trailer's set up in my parents' backyard, and I've been doing some modifications and doing some stuff to the Jeep. But, yeah, I'm just trying to get as much content out right now as possible. I was talking to my friend Brian from Off Grid Backcountry Adventures, uh, fellow YouTube friend, and we were just talking how I think it's so important to give you guys a lot of content right now and entertainment and um, certainly, you know, semi-truck drivers and grocery store workers and hospital workers are certainly very essential right now, but I think content creators um, we need to step up and, and make things for you guys to watch and be entertained. I also think this is going to be, you know, once it all blows over and the world's back to normal, if you will, I think that this is going to give a lot of people a big shift in perspective to go out and live their lives and do what they want to do now. Um, so those are just my brief thoughts on it. I've got some videos uh, on my channel if you want to check those out, covering more of what I've done. Um, but yeah, thank you, uh, you know, you guys for, for asking for the update. I think it's really cool to give that update to fellow Overlanders. Here's Coda too. She came in just in time. Hey, Coda girl. Long time travel partner. So anyways, I hope you guys are all doing good out there. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see this video to see what the other nomads are up to. You can probably hear cars in the back. Not a typical thing for me, but anyways, um, yeah, thank you guys for you know, asking where I'm at and uh, listening to my story and back to the rest of the video, I guess. <laughs> Hi guys, we're the Matneys. I'm Aubrey. I'm Christian. And we are down here in Southern Argentina. About a month ago, we entered from Chile to Argentina and at the time everything was super calm. And within a week of that entry, everything kind of fell apart. We got down to El Calafate, which is the entry to Southern Patagonia, and total lockdown hit us while we were in our van. When we first got to El Calafate, we found an amazing wild camping spot on the beach, but as things started to escalate in the country, um, we realized we really needed to find a more solid location with an address so that we weren't in a lot of the situations that other travelers have found themselves in. Right. And we absolutely lucked out um, a local hostel took us and two other overlanders in, two other overlanding couples. Right. So there's six of us in total, and we're just um, staying at this hostel until everything hopefully blows over. Yeah, so we've been here for three weeks plus already. Mm -hmm. um, haven't had any real issues. I mean, we are only going out when, it, when we need groceries, so we've only made a couple of outings since we've been here. But no real issues. We've had a incredible hospitality from the local people here. Um, a lot of community with a couple of other overlanders. We've got this beautiful camp spot behind us um, and have really just been enjoying ourselves. So everything, I, I'd say we have the best case scenario yeah. for what travelers could be experiencing during a lockdown. Um, it is a bit indefinite right now. Like we really don't know what's going to be coming next for us. Um, none of the, the six of us do, 
but right now this hostel is just allowing us to park here and definitely use their facilities, use their Wi-Fi, yeah. take showers there, really just enjoy ourselves in their space and be really, really comfortable. So we've actually experienced a lot of hospitality from these specific locals, um, and so we're, we're so, so, so grateful to uh, the people of Alcala Fatima yeah, for, for sure. allowing us to stay here and stick it out until everything hopefully calms down soon. I'm not going to lie, <laughs> a lot of travelers all over the world are feeling it feels very unsettling to be in a country where you're not a citizen, mm -hmm. you don't have the same rights, essentially, I guess. Right. And so I think, uh, you know, maybe once or twice a week I've uh, broken down and stressed out and thinking like, oh my word, we need to get home, absolutely need to go home when we're from the U.S. Yeah. So um, things are really escalating in the United States. And we, because we have such a great situation here, we've just found a lot of peace staying here. Yeah, And for hopefully sure. um, sticking it out until everything goes back to normal. Plus, we're a 30-hour drive away from Buenos Aires, which mm -hmm. is the, the international airport we would be using. Um, yeah. And that is a ton of police checkpoints. That's a lot of barriers. That is an insane amount of driving. It's just, it's very unrealistic right now for us to travel there. Um, which might not make sense to any of you that aren't in a country that isn't locked down, but like these countries are taking it very, very seriously and they're being very, very strict with their rules. So inter-country transport is very difficult right now. Yeah. So we've played with options of leaving, like throwing ideas around, but realistically we're just, we're here. Yeah. And we have such a good setup here that we don't want to take it for granted. We want to just, you know, dig in, be safe, be smart, um, hang out, you yeah. know. Yeah. We know we're going to be here for at least a month. We're three weeks in so far. I don't know what that's going to mean afterwards. Um, it's a bit indefinite. But the only thing that we're really nervous about right now is the winter, I would say, because the winter is coming on here. Yeah. Um, other than that, though, we're just fine. So I guess we'll TBD what we're going to, how this is all going to play itself out. We love you guys, Luca and Sada. We wish that we could be with you yes. quarantining together in Argentina. It sucks that we're in the same country, but so far apart. There would so. be a big, great big spot right here for Lucky Lou if you guys were for close. For sure. You ready? <laughs> okay. Hello, Luca and Sara, Pam Hi. and Paul. Um, we, as you know, we were on our way to South America. Our uh, goal was to get to Cuenca, Ecuador, drop some stuff, and then work on our visas there, and then travel down to Ushuaia and, and take our time coming back. Uh, and that was all working pretty good <laughs> until we got to Guatemala. Um, and that's when the borders started closing. There initially we were at a place that seemed like a really good place, but the owner wasn't really a part of the community and felt um, nervous about the community. So we backtracked to Mexico. And now we found ourselves at this wonderful place called Mission Surf Mexico, where they work with some children in need of assistance um, and have taken them in for education, teaching them how to swim, giving them room and board and um, surfing lessons. And treating them like family, yes. which is really important. But for us, we're, uh, we feel safe. Uh, we've decided to stay here for at least two weeks so that we can, you know, vet ourselves as no Corona. Um, and kind of wait and see what happens. Our goal is still to get to South America and it's just a matter of time now. We'll just have to wait this out. But I hope this video finds you guys well and uh, we will talk soon. Bye. Ciao, Bellas. Hello, beautiful world. Hello. We are Brittany and Drew of Mr. and Mrs. Adventure. And so far, overlanding during this pandemic has been well, pretty interesting. It's been interesting. First and foremost, we should say that we came back from Panama just in the nick of time before they closed the international airport. We'd kind of caught wind about the coronavirus and everything going on and felt it was essential to get back to our country and a rolling home, which is our van that we love dearly. Because our van was not with us in Panama. So yes, we flew back three days before the Panamanian president closed all the airports and for that we were so grateful um, because we came back after kind of the outbreak had already started gathering all of our supplies at the grocery stores was pretty interesting yeah um, we specifically flew back to san diego california that's where our van was in storage 
pulled it out, got it all geared up, ready to go, propane, water. And from there, we headed out for BLM land first because during the time that we were spending in the San Diego area, we were witnessing the closures of all public beaches, parking yeah. lots for those beaches and parks. It was just becoming really clear that we were gonna need to get out of town if we were gonna hope to. Avoid any outbreaks or closures in general that might keep us trapped there. So we headed out to BLM, spent a few nights out there and it was blissful. We then checked into a campground, one of the few private campgrounds that was open in the area because we needed to receive packages through yeah, the mail. That was the prime reason we decided to go to a campground. We hardly Any ever reason. stay in campgrounds unless we need a shower or supply on water when we can't get it elsewhere but getting our packages delivered to us was key. So throughout the period of a week in which we stayed there, and we actually just left it today, today. earlier today. And so right now we're parked at a beautiful spot next to a river. I'll show you. This is where we are. Right on a little peninsula. Look out the back window too. That's right. We got water all around, guys. <laughs> So at this point, we don't really know what's in store. There's a lot of unknowns ahead and we're just gonna keep hoping for the best, making informed decisions and staying safe, staying home and trying to move as little as possible. Yeah, we really only go outside of our van if we need to recreate uh, or if one of us needs to go into a store. So that's about it. And we're sending our blessings and amazing things to all the other overlanders out there and van lifers and anybody else who is living a nomadic digital nomad lifestyle. And all of you who are at home and you don't get to kind of escape and wander. Um, yeah. But all right, guys, check out our channel if you haven't already, Mr. and Mrs. Adventure. And thank you, Sara and Luca, for including <laughs> us. We're sending you all of our love and our love to the dogs and the kitties, too. Grazie mille. Grazie mille. Ciao. Ciao. Hi, guys. Here is Diana and Marco from Close to Eternity. We are an Italian couple. We are currently stuck in Trelew, Chubut province, Argentina. What happened is all the restrictions for the coronavirus have been taken really seriously here and they were taken all of a sudden. So all the travelers like us got immediately stuck exactly in the point where they were when the restrictions were applied, let's say. Our problem is that we are van lifers. We live in a van, as you can see. We found ourselves without the possibility to go to campings because they were shut down. Hotels will not accept foreigners and most of them were closed anyway because they are points of gathering, so they were not allowed by the law. Many people offered to host us and the police said no. You cannot be hosted by anyone because you are foreigners. Yes, we can see you've been in South America in the last year, but we don't really care. So even just the fact that we are Italians, so being Italian, of course, the panic is even bigger. Uh, even if someone tried to help us, the police will not allow us. They just gave us a place where to stay because we, we became a mediatic attraction for this city. So what happened is at the beginning, they just said, we don't know where to place you and we don't care. We don't have a place for you. And we were like, okay, but at midnight, the new restrictions say that everyone has to be in a place and we cannot move anymore. So what are we going to do? Will you arrest us if we're still around? Yes, we will. Okay, fantastic. We are not planning to have our vehicle impounded. It's our home on wheels, but it's still a home for us. And here the procedure says six months in jail. So we insisted, we got interviewed, we tried to attract the attention and in the end they could not ignore us anymore. So we were given a, sp a space, a spot in the local sport field in the end. We have cold showers, we have only one toilet, which is not really in good conditions, but we manage somehow and we have access to water. We asked about basic facilities about basic needs like we need to do groceries and they said you cannot get out for any reason you can't get out our quarantine for some reason is stricter than a normal argentinian person so if you 
find an Argentinian who did our same exact trip, they, they will have many more possibilities of moving around than we, than we do. So I'm going to show you now where we are. So we have space. We have lots of space. We have a, a soccer field just for the two of us. We can exercise. That's not too bad. Considering how, how some other travelers got treated, we really won the lottery up here. So guys, we are taking this very seriously. We really wanted to do quarantine to self-isolate. At the beginning, they were not putting us into the condition to do so. Some of us couldn't reach the airports where they had their flights booked. While we understand the need to care more for the global security than for a small minority, we also understand that we have been stuck in this mechanism and we are the collateral damage for them. We are the ones that didn't, that didn't have to be there. We are the inconvenience here. We are the ones that brought the virus here. We foreigners. So there's a massive panic attack. People don't want to see foreigners around because as soon as we step out of here and people start seeing us, they start to call the police. There is a security number that they have to call to report if they found, if they encounter any, any kind of foreigners. We, we can't disappear from, from a day to the other like this. We have been stuck like everyone else. Flights for our countries, not there anymore. This is our situation, guys. I hope you are in a better condition than most of the people we are hearing of. We are okay. We've been taken care of. We got lucky. We are in a city where there are few tourists. Luckily, they found a place for each of us. But lots of other people, like Liu, they didn't, they didn't get that lucky. It took days to, for them to find a place where to, where to rescue them. And they tried to just let them go out of the city uh, without providing providing the basic facilities. Hey guys, I'm Huub van der Mark from Huub Vlogs and this is uh, Jeppe, my puppy dog, and we are stuck in Argentina. Yeah, I thought it was fun to make it look like I'm stuck at this amazing place. This is actually my green screen. This is how bored I am. I'm on the road since two years with my puppy dog in a 1987 Russian old-timer. I'm driving from Argentina to Alaska. My van is over here on the other side of the gate, but I'm not allowed to go there. There's also a police car patrolling 24 hours a day. We are with six people in total here and it's a different group because three of us go to bed at like 11 and wake up at 8. And the other three stay up till like late in the night and watch TV. Most rooms have four beds in it, like this. Uh, I have a really, really small room over here. Hi, Yippa! My green screen and my computer. I basically sit almost all day on my computer. I try to make videos with old footage I have, play with the puppy, and I spend a lot of time thinking how I can make my life more effective when this is over. <laughs> Take 11 and action. Hi guys, we are Hector and Marian. No, I'm Hector and she's Marian. <laughs> we want to thank you for writing and making us participate in this video. We already know that you are in the camp in Las Grutas, now safe, and in your quarantine uh, location. And we are very happy to know that you are finally safe. When the government gave the order to stay in our home, we were uh, 300 kilometers from here. Yeah. And we had time to return without any problem. We were going to travel to the south of Portugal, mm. driving along the coast. We, we had planned this, this trip with uh, our Fender van, uh, but the news that came around the world made us think that maybe uh, we could not finish uh, our trip. We feel quite sad mm. because uh, so many people have already died. We suppose that because our government didn't make the right decisions on time and now the situation is very hard in our country, we think that parking our van isn't the problem for us in this moment. We, we decided to return home so as not to contract the virus and in the case of uh, having it, uh, respect the quarantine and not infect other people. Our priority in the mm. first place was to be safe yeah. and not contract the virus. Anyway, it is always very hard to return to our home because we feel very good living in our van. Yes, uh, we, we hope uh, to, to be able to live uh, permanently in it. 
Although for for Witcher, we must first change the the van to 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 a larger a larger one. We want to thank you for being such special people and for all the work yeah. you do so that we can continue your uh, journey through uh, to your YouTube, YouTube channel. YouTube channel. Okay, be guys, safe. be safe. And soon we will hit the, the road, road again. again. Sure. Sure. <laughs> bye bye. Hello, we're B, Theo, and Gingy Bear, and <laughs> all together known as the Indie Projects, and we're currently driving around the world with our cat. For the last six years, we've been traveling all over Europe, and we've clocked up well over 100,000 miles. And the next step of our journey, driving around the world, we were just about to ship our van all the way to Canada for the next leg of our journey, which is around North America for the next two years. And unfortunately, overnight, all of them plans have now been put on hold. So when they got put on hold, we were stuck in the UK, which initially didn't seem like a bad idea, but it's been really interesting as this pandemic has unfolded. There's been a lot of hostility towards van lifers here. People are scared of having them near their communities. And we personally received death threats and a lot of abuse online and in person, which is just not very welcoming. We've been really lucky to find a lovely house here with a cat that we're looking after called Tilly. And we've just been going about our normal days, really. We've been keeping busy with work, creating content, you're writing an ebook. Yeah, I'm working on an ebook right now, which is the perfect time because we are stuck in one place. Normally we're driving absolutely everywhere. So it's been an interesting, if not planned, halt to our normal day-to-day -day life. Exactly, and we keep just telling ourselves, remain positive, our plans of going to Canada and driving around North America, all the way up to Alaska, is gonna happen. It'll just take a little bit longer and we're not sure when the borders are going to open. Yeah, we hope wherever you are in the world, you're safe, you're happy and you're healthy and we will all get through this. This is Michael and this is Susanne and we are here in Las Crutas, Argentina in quarantine. We had been traveling in South America with our drug camper Esmeralda for eight months in South America but now we are stuck here in the campground uh, luckily our gracious host has upgraded us to this little cabin where we now live Susan is studying Spanish we're doing meditation, yoga, baking bread uh, cooking our favorite German dishes and uh, walking in the yard of the campground which we are the only guests so overall life is bearable but we are looking forward to getting out of here and uh, being able to go towards our home in california take care you guys hello this is chris from andean roads in buenos aires um, I own a business that rents motorhomes throughout Argentina, Uruguay and Chile. We have been in business for almost 20 years and we also deal with overlanders. Uh, we have a campground for overlanders here in Buenos Aires and we store their vehicles and provide logistical support of different kinds. We have been doing this for many, many years. Uh, with the arrival of the coronavirus problem, um, the lockdown in Argentina, which is obligatory, has created a lot of uh, out of the ordinary situations for travelers from abroad who were in Argentina at the time. Some of those situations have uh, been resolved really well and with the help of the locals and then there are some stories that are not that successful and without the help of the locals so there's a little bit of everything we also have some guests that have been stuck here for what three weeks yes three weeks and they're not in a rush to go anywhere <laughs> <laughs> they're from germany and they're just waiting to see what happens with this situation Okay, so here's our one of our yards. 
We have one of our units here. There's a Sprinter from Switzerland back there. Here's a Land Cruiser from the Netherlands. Back there we have a, a Mercedes also from Switzerland. And it goes on and on. There's a Land Cruiser from Switzerland, two motorcycles from Sweden. There's a Mercedes from Germany. This Toyota is from the States. That's uh, another car from Germany, Switzerland. Here's one from the Netherlands, the Amarok. That's from the United States, the van, and so on and so on. So the landscape in our, at our base has changed dramatically. Now we barely have room for our own cars, which we had to move somewhere else. Our shop is full of cars all the way to the back. And there's more here and there's more in the other yard. So um, some of the stories we've heard in this crazy three weeks so far, um, the bad ones, there's a lot of good ones like Argentinians dropping by stranded travelers and dropping food or even police uh, or municipalities, uh, assisting them in what they can, uh, giving them places to sleep or to stay, safe places. Some others were not that lucky. We have a family close to a little town in Patagonia in the middle of nowhere where that is not allowed to go into town, not even to get food supplies. So they're running out of food. So we're, uh, we have been in contact with them and trying to help them. Um, and then I just heard from a couple of uh, Swedish guys who um, shipped their Land Rover uh, right before the virus happened. And by the time the car got to Argentina, their Land Rover, the virus was already spread throughout the world. And to make it short, they have been trying to get their Land Rover out of the port here in Buenos Aires for uh, three weeks without any success. They're not allowed to take it out and drive around or not even to our yard. So um, they are forced to, and they, they want to catch the last flight available to Europe, which is tomorrow. So they're forced to unfortunately send the vehicle back to Europe after coming all this way. So they were not happy about it but those are the type of things that have been happening here. Hello, beautiful people. Hello, guys. I'm uh, Evi from Greece. And I'm Dida from Spain. And we have been traveling uh, with our van for the last six months. We started in Chile in October 2019. Then we moved to Argentina, Uruguay, Paraguay. And now, right now, we are in Brazil, mm. at the southern part of the country, or kind of like uh, a bit before uh, Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo. We are here experiencing this uh, weird period of coronavirus. Yeah, we managed to cross uh, the day that Argentina closed its borders. We uh, were in uh, the Iguazu Falls and we crossed directly to Brazil because we had already uh, visited Argentina mm -hmm. and uh, the situation there uh, seems to have escalated rather quickly. And uh, this uh, curfew, as you guys yeah, know, the, the movement of people is quite restricted. Uh, so uh, we're glad that we managed to cross uh, to Brazil because uh, at least here the, the movement is not restricted. We have chosen to isolate uh, and quarantine ourselves uh, in, the, in the nature outside, uh, far away from, from any group of people to minimize any contact and any uh, possibility of, uh, of spreading the virus. We're, we're taking it uh, one step at a time and uh, we're glad that, uh, that we could cross, uh, cross to Brazil. There is not a curfew situation here as uh, in Argentina or Bolivia or uh, Peru. Uh, so we can move uh, freely, uh, but uh, of course all uh, the restaurants, bars and the enterprises are uh, closed right now, or at least the most of them. Um, but uh, what we have chosen to do, as Didac said, is like to get lost in the nature, away from people, and uh, making the best out of this situation, like still exploring and uh, doing some activities out in the nature while we are uh, self-guaranteeing and uh, self-isolating away from, you know, the big uh, majority of people. Mm. And uh, we haven't had uh, many problems with locals. Usually people, Brazilians have been very friendly and helpful with us. 
uh, except with a couple of, uh, of uh, instances. But uh, overall, uh, we're, we felt quite uh, welcomed and we have everything that, uh, that we need. So uh, we feel uh, that we're quite lucky actually, uh, given the situation. And right now we are waiting to see when the borders are open again. Uh, nobody knows that, it's quite uncertain times, but um, yeah, we know that the trip we have planned and uh, we have thought about it's not going to be the same. Uh, we have to adapt to a new normal with more restrictions and uh, we are, are of course going to do that. It's, uh, yeah, it's the, the only way right now to keep, uh, to keep moving when of course the situation will be better. And uh, it's definitely possible to keep uh, traveling and uh, on that way, and it's quite responsible, I think. But yeah, we have to adapt to a new normal and respect the restrictions that are going to be set up. Mm. And we're hoping that uh, that it comes back to to uh, yeah to a better situation soon enough, and uh, and uh, yeah we can uh, uh, see what we do. But uh, yeah, right now it's just day by day. But exactly. Yeah, but hopefully see many of you in the future when, uh, you know, the borders will be open again and when we can move freely uh, as, uh, as all before. All over South America, yeah. Exactly. And uh, all over the world, let's say. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're in Brazil, you can also contact us on my Instagram and maybe see you somewhere. Mm -hmm. Cool. But uh, we're all uh, nice, uh, nice uh, to meet you all of you guys and uh, good luck to all of uh, the overlanders uh, all over the world. Stuck somewhere. Good luck from us. and. Uh, be safe. <laughs> Bye. Ciao. Hey everybody, we're Trent and Allie. We've been traveling in our self-converted camper van for about the last two years, a little bit more. And we spent all of last year basically traveling through Central and South America having a blast. We love the unpredictability and the adventure that comes with exploring new countries, learning new languages, and really enjoying the people and the culture that comes with each different country. It's been a blast and we were pretty blindsided by everything that's happened in the last few weeks with the coronavirus. Honestly, we never expected to be where we are right now. And it's so crazy because so many people from the United States used to ask us, well, what if something happens while you're down there? And what if there's this? And what if there's that? And every time it's just like, no problem. Like, we'll figure it out. We're good problem solvers. But nobody saw this pandemic coming. We started getting kind of worried that if they closed all the borders and we couldn't get out of this country, if the virus got into the country, what was the infrastructure like? What was the medical system like? And we talked to our embassy and they said to get out as soon as possible. Our travel insurance actually told us that our policy would be void if we continued to stay in Argentina because people were all being called home to their home countries. And we have elderly family members that we really care about and are concerned about and wanted to be close to them in case something happened. In the span of about 72 hours, we went from trying to cross over into Uruguay and continuing on with our adventure to all of a sudden borders starting to close left and right, shipping lanes starting to close so we couldn't even get our van back to the States. We ended up storing our van in storage in Buenos Aires and flying back on one of the last flights possible to the United States. So now that we've made it back to the United States, we've sat through a 14 day quarantine and we are held up with family. Luckily we have family that have room for us to live with them or else we would literally be homeless right now. But we're, we're making do. And I would say that we're happy to be back in our home country where we can be close to family. It's an absolute blessing and I don't think we could be more grateful. Hi guys, we are Candace and Jordan uh, from Be Old Later. We've, this is Nugget. This is Nugget. <laughs> this is a live animal. Um, we've been on the road for about two years driving the Pan American Highway from Vancouver to Tuktoyaktuk to Ushuaia. And now we are here in Clarence, New York, basically Buffalo, New York, um, waiting for our van to get shipped back from Uruguay. We shipped our van uh, and all the borders closed where we were. So we made it into Uruguay. We actually ended up leaving South America about 20 days earlier. Yeah, it was like our original planned ship date. Um, it just turned out that right after we crossed into Uruguay from Argentina, they closed the border the next day. Yeah. And uh, we continued, shipped our, our van with our friends, um, threw it in the container, uh, and then tried to switch flights to get out of Uruguay sooner. Uh, our original flight was from Buenos Aires, but we couldn't make it back into Argentina. Because the um, borders were closed. Yeah. So yeah. We've, we've been dealing with a lot of changes. We've been dealing with a lot of being on the phone for a very long time and changing flights. Um, we're happy to be home, but 
we basically changed a flight, got back into the U.S. where our parents are um, around the 20th of March. And we've just been staying at parents' houses in Florida and New York for the last couple days. So Yeah, I got in, um, did a little road trip in my dad's truck from Florida. Who has a rooftop tent? Yeah. Did a little drive up trying to stay away from people, staying in parks and on forest service roads. Um, got up to Buffalo and uh, yeah, decided to just go live in uh, Candace's folks' uh, cottage. My parents for, have like, a, a, a cottage in the middle of the woods, so we're very lucky for that. Uh, it's basically a cabin in the middle of the woods, and we could just be alone for a couple days just to make sure we didn't get sick. Obviously, there are asymptomatic people, but we just wanted to try and keep it safe uh, for as long as we could. So we stayed there for almost two weeks, um, just uh, staying away from people. So Hanging now, around, yeah. Riding around on the four wheelers, yeah. foraging for ramps. Foraging for ramps, foraging for all the spring veggies and plants. Trying and to work out as much as possible and lots stay Lots of workouts. Um, but yeah, so now we, we are gonna be making our way back south again to await the van and meet the van. Uh, when it gets back to the States, which should be in a couple weeks. So, yeah. yeah. There's lots of borders that are closed down and the logistics are challenging, but our main goal is just to stay healthy and stay safe and stay away from other people, not spread anything, not get anything, and uh, still try to, like... Balance family yeah. at the same time. So, obviously, we're staying with my parents and Jordan's parents, so trying to stay safe and still being able to visit with them. Yeah, that's us. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and um, good luck to everyone. Bye. Thanks to everybody who participated in this video. We don't think that van life uh, will end uh, because it's a huge community, it's a really strong community. Everybody has each other's back, uh, everybody is trying to help and support each other. No matter where we are in the world, it's like having a huge family that you know that is living the same lifestyle and have the same dreams, the same goals and facing the same adversity and um, problems. So it's, it's amazing. So we love all of you. Stay strong, guys. We will get through this together. We will be free to travel again in the future. If you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. And please consider to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done already. And to all the other YouTube channels of the people that you have seen in this video. Facebook, Instagram, blog, vlog, everything that you can do to support these people. You will find everything down in the description below. Yes, so thank you again guys. We love you, la vita bella. We appreciate you, life is beautiful. See you on the next one. Ciao. Ciao. Besitos.